Within the 83,000 square miles that is Guyana lie dozens of communities that are unable to readily access government services to help improve their way of life. The coalition government saw this and steps were taken to address this critical issue. The most recent efforts took them to Region 8. Hello, welcome to InfoHub In-Depth, where we highlight the recent government outreach held in the Potaro Ciperuni area. Are you ready to embark on a truly epic adventure to an undiscovered corner of South America, where some of the most spectacular natural attractions are unveiled within a beautifully diverse landscape? From the wetlands and savannas to the ancient mountains, magnificent waterways and lush and rich in rainforest would provide a vast playground for some of the most exotic and breathtaking creatures on the planet, including many of the world's giant species. This untouched land of mystery and wonder serves up an exclusive experience for travelers. So are you ready for a new, awe-inspiring adventure? Welcome back to nature. Welcome to Guyana. Considered the heart of Guyana and sitting at an altitude of 415 meters or 1300 feet, its business activities are centered on gold and diamond mining operations. Ministers and heads of the various agencies and departments engaged residents of the township and surrounding communities during the outreach to get a first-hand look at their needs and seek to address them. The residents came from far and wide to capitalize on this opportunity. Government ministers and officials left their offices in Georgetown on Friday, August 2nd, 2019 and traveled to the mining town in Madia in the Pataro Sipiruni region where they brought the services to the people. The government comes to outreach commenced at 10.30 hours at the Madia Secondary School. Among those present were Prime Minister the Honorable Moses Nagamutu, Minister of Social Protection Amna Ali, Minister of Public Infrastructure David Patterson and several other senior government officials and ministers. Residents were assured that their concerns will be heard and address. Today, however, is not for long speech making. It is to be able to receive your complaints, your grievances, your representation, because we are out here as a mobile government, bringing the government to you rather than you coming to the government. And this exercise is a very unique exercise in Guyana. And I'm told around the Caribbean, ministers fan out, reach out, and they are able to talk uh, and make contact with people, particularly those outside of the city. This morning, it's a one-day exercise, and um, we are looking forward for the people of Madia to be serviced in the various by the various ministries or agencies. So, as we listen to their concerns, we are going to be able to bring solutions. To them on the spot. InfoHub also spoke with some residents who commended the government for this initiative and expressed some of the issues they'd like to be addressed. Well, I think it's it's very good um, reaching to the people, having all the different um, organizations, the different ministries being here, and um, so that people can come. It's a good thing for you know the government to come and meet us, you know, face to face than for us to having to travel hundreds of miles to get to Georgetown. Um, it is very good and um, I'm glad at least every, a lot of people would um, in, appreciate it, what the government is doing. At least I personally foresee the, what the government have done for the four years. They have done well. Present at the outreach are the Ministry of Public Health, the Ministry of Education, the Ministry of Natural Resources, the Ministry of Public Security, the Ministry of Public Infrastructure, the Ministry of the Presidency, the Ghana Lands and Surveys Commission, GRA, and many others. Many of the residents from the mining town were hopeful for meeting with the Minister of Natural Resources, Honorable Raphael Trotman, to discuss several issues related to mining and allocation of lands. However, despite it being a mining town, it is the firm belief of Infrastructure Minister David Patterson that the roads don't have to reflect that. The government has spent approximately $1 billion for internal road upgrades in Madia in Region 8. We've just spoken to the Minister of Public Infrastructure, David Patterson, who explains what has been done thus far. 
As the Prime Minister was mentioned, in 2013, 2014, when we were in opposition, right where we're standing now was a dirt track. And at that time, the opposition had controlled this, this particular region, Region 8. And we had actually staged protests. I mean, the Prime Minister reminded me this morning, protests on this exact same um, road because of the condition it was in. I mean, in the school, right in front of the school, was, it was in an abysmal state. Um, so one of the first projects we embarked on our urban upgrade was to rigid pave um, Madio. We spent about uh, almost a billion dollars in all, and, and we continue to spend um, that money. So we've done all the roads in the township, and then, of course, now the, the tenders are out now. It's a move that go from where it stopped now all the way to the airstrip. So um, it's anticipated within um, a short space of time we can come. When you land on, on, in Madio, you'll be on a nice concrete paved road. Minister Patterson says there are other plans for Region 8, like a solar energy plant. But regards to the road, of course, he says government has plans for the road coming into Madia. And of course, an engineer is charged with looming that road on a yearly basis. And this is in keeping it our vision for what a tongue should look like. Not because it's a we are a mining tongue and it's deemed a mining tongue, that it should look a mining tongue or should it feel like a mining tongue. So we've, we've, we've done several initiatives here, I mean, including uh, bolster the power and light, so therefore obviously so they can get better, more uh, reliable electricity. Um, so we, 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 I'm also, right now, I mean, you, um, there's a tender out for a solar farm in Madia, funded by the IDB, so that we can um, actually make Madia a green township. There is existing a contract um, right now um, that for maintenance contract. Obviously, the challenge we have with the, with the trailers, just as you mentioned, is the rain. Um, obviously, it's, it's lateral surface, and that is um, that has a lot of clay, and so therefore it, it retains the water. So obviously, um, so it, and when the water is there in the heavy duty, particularly the heavy duty vehicles, they dig it up and as they But we have a contract in place for maintenance. So every so so the the contractor goes from the top to the bottom, top to the bottom, um, every single, um, well, soon to get to the one end to the other. So, um, but obviously any um, particularly bad spots, we give it an urgent intervention. This is just to keep us through. The idea is I have my, my engineers testing different polymers and soil stabilization um, techniques. So the idea is obviously is at some point if we can find one that works with the unique Guyanese soil, is to have a, a compound added to the lateralistic surfaces which holds it and binds it even better so therefore it can stand up to better wear and tear in the, in the um, long run so that until we can actually have paved roads. Among other plans on stream, the minister had said a tender was also out for a solar farm for Madia funded by the IDB. While this would be greatly welcomed by all, there were those who simply wanted the peace of mind that comes with having proof of your birthright. The government comes to Madia exercise proved fruitful for Patricia Passard who came to get a new birth certificate. Passard said getting her new birth certificate was a must because she intends to get registered at the house to house registration process. Most importantly I'm here today because I wanted to apply for a new birth certificate so that I could get to um, be on the voters list to get a, to obtain a new ID card because it's very important. Without that you can't do no business transaction or anything. Describing the outreach as very convenient, she said that the people of Maria are very grateful. So I'm really grateful that this is happening today and people could come here, you know. Everyone is so nice, the greeting all the ministers are here and so. Yeah, I think the matter of residents really appreciate this. This comes as the government continues to deliver its services throughout Guyana. The coalition government has been working to decentralize various public services and empower more of the local authorities. Among these is the provision of certificates of birth and debts and passport services. Recently, new passport offices were opened in Region 5 and 10. Meanwhile, even the mining town needs a source of food, something that our next Madia resident hopes to one day provide for more than just her village. We're here in Campbellstown, where just about a dozen farmers have occupied 10 acres of land forming their own co-op farming society. One of those farmers, Annie Williams, has taken the opportunity of the Government Comes to You outreach to approach her government in granting assistance in gaining water and light. As you can see, we're doing farming, but um, during the dry season, we don't have water, so to water the plants. Right now, they, um, it's growing because of the, the rain. As the peas, we pick it right now, so when we, uh, we have to, when we pick it, we have to dry it back in the day, and so at afternoon, we 
like beat it out and in the night we have to shell it out, to take out the shells. So sometimes we there late in the night and by the, we didn't get the, the light, sometimes we got to left it and wait till the next day for um, shell it out. Annie took the more than 1.5 mile journey to Madia Secondary School where she called on her government and they responded. Right now they have a solar system, they're giving them electricity, power, and that's free of cost. And the complaint there is that that system, since it was installed, it's only working at half its capacity. So we have to check to see, of course, the first thing, what it will cost to run the line into the area. And the second, we look at, the, at reinstoring the capacity of the solar energy. And of course, solar is free to them. So they need to look at the feasibility both on, on their side and also if we run the line for them, if they could pay the bill. At this point, there is no access to portable water within the area. But GW is working on getting water to the area. We already did some, um, some work to do some um, estimation of what kind of uh, materials needed to carry an extension line from Camerton to the area to ensure the resident within the area access portable water. And how soon could we see this happening? Uh, we could we see that around maybe late this month, July, early September. Uh, sorry, the late August, early September. And he's convinced that with this government intervention, not only will they be able to expand their co-op society, but grow their farming operations in the near future. Whilst the turnout in the town of Madi was decent, it was understood that not everyone across the vast Potaro Ciparoni region would be able to attend this outreach. So the ministers travelled into the communities themselves. Minister of Social Protection, the Honourable Amna Ali, and Director General of the Ministry of the Presidency, Joseph Harmon, travelled to Campbelltown, where they further engaged with residents in the community. People used to look at Madi as a little village far away from Georgetown, don't care what you have or what you don't have. But this government is mindful. We want development to continue. We want you to enjoy the good life. The Director General reiterated Minister Ali's sentiments. He expressed that the development of Guyanese citizens' lives is a priority for the government. The development plan for this region will come from the people of this region. Because we believe that development has to come from the bottom up. We are not going to sit in Georgetown and just make a plan and say to you, work on this. That is not the way we do things. What we will do is establish some very broad guidelines, some very strategic things within which our country will develop. And in that regard, we have established something called a Green State Development Strategy. Presidents took advantage of the opportunity to have their issues addressed. Following the meeting, the government officials handed over sports gear and other items to the residents. Meanwhile, over in El Paso, residents were poised to voice their frustration with the current road situation to get to their village. But Minister of Public Infrastructure David Patterson was way ahead of them. El Paso, Mykobi and Chumachamari residents are slated to soon benefit from major rehabilitative works. The announcement was made by Minister of Public Infrastructure, Honorable David Patterson, during a community meeting at El Paso Region 8. I know from the junction and... Um, to here from Brian Secre Junction to here, I know um, I traveled it, so I know how the condition did. Um, the good news is, well, the good news is, is, is that we actually, um, I, my team, my the regional engineer, just informed me that the tenders for that road goes out next week. The contract for the maintenance of the five mile stretch of road will go out for tender next week. The road will extend from the Brian Sucre Junction in Madia for three miles and includes another two miles of rehabilitative works from the Mykobi Junction to El Paso. The maintenance contract is expected to provide better access to several villages in the Pataro Sipiruni region. Residents engaged Education Minister Dr. Nicolette Henry, who was also in attendance at the meeting, in matters pertaining to reintegration of teenage mothers. 
They also praised the government for its hard work in the education sector, citing the proof that the region was the most improved region in this year's NGSA. Despite roadworks being a major concern for some, education and health were even more pressing in some instances. The community meeting at Princeville Region 8 proved fruitful as Public Health Minister Valda Lawrence listened and sought to address the concerns of residents. Most of the issues raised surrounded access to education and health services. The residents commended the efforts of the government. As I live here for approximately 31 years, and I have seen a change in this time, and let me give Jack their jacket right there. We still get in hard time, but we get in a little change coming. Good. So we decide. We, I said we, we said in, we are pig language or is pig language, but we. We would like this government to be five years more to see. On the spot solutions were reached while others were crafted with the hope of soon being realized. We are trying to at least have health workers within each area. And so today I'm happy to say that we are here to bring good news to camp, to Princeville. And sir, to answer your, uh, Mr. Lloyd, to answer your um, queries, we are here to tell you that we are taking you down to Georgetown. Your CHW course will start on the 8th of August and we will want to train two other persons. It was only last week reaching health services together with the rehabilitative services, which is part of the Ministry of Public Health program. And the new direction now is having an optometrist, not ophthalmologist. Ophthalmologists, they're the specialists that will do the eye surgeries. But that is a rare specialty we have in the country when we would have examined every region. So the new direction now is having an optometrist. Those are the, the medical eye specialists, if you want to call them, that look at examination of the eye. They can tell you the diseases and they can order treatment for you. And that, is, that will work well in the primary care setting. This is how we are going to be able to address the issues. We believe that we must listen to the people, the people must tell us because you live in the communities and you know what is best needed. Um, the President, His Excellency, doesn't want us to stay in our offices and make decisions for other places. He says we have to go out there. Princeville residents are enthusiastic about the growth and development of their village. Therefore, residents explained how the existing issues affected them and made suggestions for the continued improvement of services in the area. These concerns carried over to the village of Mykobe, where residents were also concerned with job creation for their youths. Minister of Foreign Affairs Karen Cummings and Minister within the Ministry of Indigenous Peoples Affairs Valerie Garrido Lowe journeyed to the village of Mykobe to meet with the villagers there. What we do with the Kurukuru students and um, the, the principal and tutors from that school now, they come to the Ministry of Indigenous Peoples Affairs to recommend that these students go to higher learning now, which is GTI. So it is not something that you're lucky if you get a job right away, especially if they're, they're not, let's say you don't have in the community, one went for carpentry and joinery, do you have a workshop here? Amongst the concerns raised was the issue of job availability for youth in the village who would have recently completed the Kuru Kuru Training College. For 2020, I'm happy yes, to for, propose for that. The for, no. For the whole building plus equipment. To this end, the villagers further requested that the government build a number of workshops so that those villagers who have been trained through Kurukuru College and GTI can have somewhere to work. Lastly, we visit Senior Communications Officer Felicia Valenzuela at the Brian Sucre Junction, commonly referred to as Tumutumari Junction. The internal road network in the township of Madia was given commendation today by a taxi driver. He was one of the residents who met with the ministers Raphael Frotman and Ronald Balkan today at a community meeting at Brian Sucre Junction here in Madia. But among the other issues raised, of course, were the need for telecommunication in this community and mining lands. Since this government has taken over, 
I have seen improvement, and I must congratulate the new cabinet. I'm a taxi driver, and if the small miners don't have the chance to work and produce, we cannot do anything. The signal is up and down. We have to stand on very far areas, put our phone in on top of the roof and all these different things to make contact with our families. So communication is very important and widespread communication. We can't have an internet and everybody just coming to pay for it because some persons can't afford it, right? At the junction here has some sort of limited access to signal, but in the back dam or what you may call it, it may be a little bit difficult. If you have a tower or something signal here, signaling out here, it'll be better for other persons to make contact. With regards to mining, Minister Trotman assured residents that coming at the end of August, his ministry will be back in the region where a mining lottery will be held. They're miners, they know no other life, and so I believe it is government's uh, duty and it should be its commitment to make that possible for them. If, if they choose mining, well, then we have to ensure that environment is an enabling one for them by, one, giving them lawful access to lands. During today's meeting, Minister Ronald Balkan also used the opportunity to encourage persons to get registered and prepare for an election that should be held very soon. I took the opportunity to advise and to inform uh, persons who were here at this meeting as to the importance of ensuring that they get themselves registered. That when the elections are held, as we expect very shortly, that they would be unable to vote at those elections unless they're registered. These outreaches and community meetings have been a staple of the coalition government and continues to provide the help and access to government services that the people of Guyana were starved of for more than 20 years. This brings us to the end of another InfoHub In-Depth. Do join us again. Goodbye. Are you ready to embark on a truly epic adventure to an undiscovered corner of South America, where some of the most spectacular natural attractions are unveiled within a beautifully diverse landscape? From the wetlands and savannas to the ancient mountains, magnificent waterways and lush and rich in rainforest would provide a vast playground for some of the most exotic and breathtaking creatures on the planet, including many of the world's giant species. This untouched land of mystery and wonder serves up an exclusive experience for travelers. So are you ready for a new, awe-inspiring adventure? Welcome back to nature. Welcome to Diana.